Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today I want to talk for a few minutes about centripetal force. Our objectives are going to be to define centripetal force and recognize that it's not a special or magical force, but it's really just a label we put on another force for a force that points toward the center of a circle, causing a centripetal acceleration. In addition, we'll work on solving problems involving calculations of centripetal force. So if an object is traveling in a circle, it is accelerating toward the center of the circle. We call that a centripetal acceleration. Newton's second law says you must have a force, a net force, to have an acceleration. In this case, we will call the force that causes a centripetal acceleration a centripetal force. And we'll label it Fc. Note that a centripetal force isn't really its own type of force. It's just a label you put on a force. So on a free body diagram, you'll never, never label a force F sub C for centripetal force. Instead, put, what, put what's actually causing that force, attention, friction, gravity, whatever it happens to be. So question one, we have a thousand kilogram car traveling at a constant speed of 20 meters per second around a horizontal circular track. Which diagram correctly represents the direction of the car's velocity and the direction of the centripetal force at one particular moment? Well, at any point on the circle, our object will have a velocity that is tangent to the circle and a centripetal force that points toward the center of the circle. So our answer must be 1. We also have a ball attached to a string moving at a constant speed in a horizontal circular path. We have a target located near the circle. We want to know at which point along the ball's path should the string be released if the ball is to hit the target. Well, remembering that the path of a ball, once it's released, will be tangent to the circle, if we come over to B, that should hit the target if we release it when the ball is right at B. In this case, we would take away the tension in the string that's causing the centripetal force, and therefore the ball would continue in a straight line as noted by Newton's first law. Question three, we have a 1,200 kilogram car traveling at nine meters per second, turning at an intersection. If it follows a horizontal circular path with a radius of 25 meters to P, at point P it hits ice and loses all frictional force on its tires. The frictional force was causing the centripetal acceleration. The centripetal force was friction. Once that's released, the car will travel in a straight line, therefore at P it will continue as if it's going to hit point B. Now, calculating centripetal force is just as straightforward. If the net force on an object by Newton's second law is equal to mass times acceleration, then the net force in the centripetal direction or toward the center of the circle is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration. In this case, centripetal acceleration we already know is equal to V squared over R, therefore F net in the centripetal direction must be equal to mv squared over r. So looking at question four, we have an 800 newton running back turning a corner in a circular path of radius one meter at a velocity of eight meters per second. Find the running back's mass, centripetal acceleration, and centripetal force. Well, the weight of our running back is 800 newtons, Therefore, that must be equal to mg. If we want to know the running back's mass, then, his mass is equal to 800 newtons over 9.81 meters per second squared for a total mass of about 81.5 kilograms. Next, we're asked to find the centripetal acceleration. ac equals v squared over r which is 8 meters per second squared over 1 meter, or 64 meters per second squared. And finally, find the centripetal force. Well, the centripetal force, F net C, must equal MAC, or 81.5 kilograms, our running back's mass, times the centripetal acceleration of 64 meters per second squared, for a total of around 5,220 newtons. All right, let's move on to the next question. 
The diagram at right shows a 5 kilogram bucket of water being swung in a horizontal circle of 0.7 meter radius at a speed of 2 meters per second. We want to find the magnitude of the centripetal force on the bucket of water. Well, net force in the centripetal direction is mass times centripetal acceleration, or mv squared over r. Mass is 5 kilograms. The velocity of our bucket is 2 meters per second. Our velocity is squared, so we square that quantity, divided by our radius of 0 0.7 meters for a total of about 28.6 newtons. And what's causing the centripetal force in this problem? Well, it must be the string attached to the bucket. Therefore, I would call that a force of tension in the rope attached to the bucket. One last problem here. 1,750 kilogram car travels at a constant speed of 15 meters per second around a horizontal circular track with a radius of 45 meters. Find the centripetal force acting on the car. Once again, net force in the centripetal direction is mass times centripetal acceleration, or mv squared over r. Our mass is 1750 kilograms. The velocity of our car is 15 meters per second squared divided by a radius of 45 meters for a total of 8,750 newtons. Hope this was helpful. Good luck and have a great day.